Well, I, we can do this. I've seen you play now, which is kind of nice. Some of the that helps. Some of the interviews that I've been doing at this festival have, have been before I've, I've seen the, the performances. So it's freaking awesome to see so much old Venom material. Brilliant. Well, 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 it's absolutely brilliant. By old people. Yeah. By, old people. <laughs> <laughs> by old, old material by really old people. Yeah, well, <laughs> your fans are old. I mean, at least yeah. the diehard fans will be old. People are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a mixture though, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of young people turning up, especially in Japan. Yeah, I mean, that was some of the things that we were seeing uh, earlier, that, you know, you have uh, diehard fans that, you know, w were there and were like 16, 17, 18, you know, yeah. you've got f they're 40 somethings now and they're coming and they want to hear the classics. But what's quite nice is to see, you know, um, to see the baton being handed on. Yeah. You know, you've still got Sabbath going, you've still got Priest going, Kiss have just done a really successful tour. And um, you know uh, the, the the audiences are mixed. You know, and I think that's really really healthy. What's what's nice now is uh, like in Sweden, for example, last year the biggest selling media for music, which outsold every other form of of, of uh, uh, um, uh, music, was a vinyl. Yeah, it's really coming back. Uh, yeah, yeah, and to see you know to go to like LA where we've been and and uh, uh, or even Japan and and have someone who's like. You know, early twenties, standing there with all the the patches on, but yeah. like with vinyl records for you to sign. It's like that's great. That's great. You know, there's a feeling. It's healthy, that, isn't it? Yeah, I think they think that like wow, we miss something really cool, and yeah. they want to have a piece of it. Of it. Yeah, yeah. They want to be part of it. Are and you guys vinyl guys? Like, yes. Do you yeah. still play records? Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought you said violent. <laughs> still violent. Violent. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all of us are kind of old school is yeah, yeah. there's something you know it's about it's very much like a live performance you know uh, an audience is never the same audience like you could do 20 dates in a row 50 dates in a row the audience won't be the same why should the band be the same you know do, does it have to be majestically predictable every night and you go well the audience didn't see the performance so we'll give them that it's like yeah. well we're a bit more whatever happens happens and that's yours you yeah. take that away, yeah. you know, um, because these days with media, with social media, you, you play the first date of a 50 date tour, the people who are coming on the last night have already seen the cool concert. Yeah, they know your set list. They know yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what we want to do is we want to go, we might play the same thing, we might not. <clears> we might open with the same song, we might not. And as unpredictable as it can be, <coughs> makes it exclusive for, yeah. the, for that audience so that nobody really knows what we're going to do. They hope we're going to do what we did last night, and maybe we don't. Right. But it, it, it just makes it a bit more exciting, a bit more interactive. And with us, it's very much about the interaction between us and the audience. You know, we're in their house, we're their guests. You know, they, they've come, we're here for you. So therefore, we're all in it together. We're not just going to play it and you just take that and that's how it is. It's like, you know, um, stopping a song like I did yesterday yeah. because it wasn't right was like, well, we could have piled through it, fumbled through it, people went, yeah, it was okay. But it was like, well, no, we can't hear. That's not fair to you, it's not fair to us. It's not what we want to do, it's not what you want to hear. Fuck it, let's just stop it, we'll just correct this. Okay, we'll do it again. And then you get something good. Yeah. And um, to be able to do that with an audience and not think we're gonna look like total twats or unprofessional if we stop, it's like, no, they don't care. They want to hear the best. Yeah, they, they do. I think it's understood. Like, it's, you know, it's the human error factor. Yeah, there, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And right. you want to give them the best of what you can. It makes it real, doesn't yeah. it? It's, it yeah. shows you that it's real. It shows you it's just fallible. Yeah, and, and that we're there to make it the best it can be for yeah. you with what we've got to give you, you know. And what, what I was hearing in the audience was decent. I mean, I know you guys were having some monitor challenges, but it didn't really affect what was coming off on stage. Oh, good, good. Oh, well, good. Yeah. You know, it's all about it's all about the, the delivery and the energy as well. Yeah. You know, and it's about it's about that that maelstrom that happens between the audience just enjoying it and, and us enjoying it. You know, so we try and play. So yesterday was a bit hard because of the monitor thing. We we couldn't really hear each other. Yeah. But we, you know, you just have to give everything you've got. And I mean, we've done shows where we came off and uh, absolutely spunked completely, absolutely exhausted. But I think if a band comes off and they're not sweating their tits off and they're not absolutely fucked so they can't even walk straight and they need to have you know 20 minutes to sit down yeah. they haven't given everything they should have given mm -hmm. and uh, if the audience if they expect that from the audience you know pay for your ticket buy your merchandise buy your records come and support us you're expecting a lot from a person 
from that loyalty yeah. other than the least you can do is give them every piece of you uh, and I think that's the beauty of this is that's all we do that's why we're there we didn't we no, didn't know okay, I, I didn't see any I didn't no. see any Stuff. No, it was like a last-minute thing. We got put in, and we yeah. were away, so we just went out. So it was basically pack our bags and get there as fast as possible and go. So we were traveling a lot, unfortunately. Well, good on you. I know that some of the like some of the, the revenue, of course, is in the merchandising you sell. So yeah, like, yeah, it is. So it's a big decision to come here and do that. But, but this, yeah, it, it just seemed really the right thing to do, and it'd be, it'd be important, you know. And we've got a North American tour coming uh, November, following the European tour. And then we went to South America, and so from that aspect as well, it was good to go. Well, here's like a calling card, you know. If we can give you a little bit of, of the bigger picture, yeah. then it, then that's why we should come and uh, and get to meet everybody and, and get well, to show. Will that be headlining when you guys come yes. back? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As Tony was saying, you know, that could be two hour sets. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. Five minutes. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And we'll have our own sound guy. We'll be in much more control of the situation. We'll be able to give a full show and and really. You know, enrich everybody, give them something a bit special. You know. Nice. So yesterday was like a um, a power pack of something we could yeah. just throw on the floor and go bang, like have a little bit of it. But you know, we'll come back and give you everything we can. Um, nice. So yeah. How long did you um, when you decided to come back and and put this together and service some of the the back catalog? How long did you guys rehearse together? We to haven't. Those, we no, haven't. You just no, started no, playing. We've never no, actually got together in the really? room together. No. <laughs> we got um, we, we got the call to do um, well, Empire, Empire of Evil. Yeah. Was booked to do the Keep It True Festival in Germany, which is a great festival. It's an old school retro festival. Um, and Oliver Weisenheimer, who looks after the festival and organises it, he said, you know, you can play some Venom songs. I was like, yeah, there's Venom songs in the set. He's like, well, you know, if we if if we got Abaddon there. You know, would you know? Would you get up and do it? Would you be surprised? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, you know, there was there was a bit of trepidation there, and it was you know because we hadn't spoke since '98. Yeah. '98. And we thought, yeah, okay, then why not? So we sort of swapped the songs, and so I live in Portugal. Tony's in London. Yeah. Tony, Tony's in Newcastle. There was no opportunity to rehearse. Even Empire of Evil, we don't rehearse because our drummer's based in Milan. Right. You know, we're all over the place. Um, so he says, "Okay, then here's the songs. Let's just turn up, get on stage, and do it." You know, we've played these songs. I've gotten us how long. You know, we should be able. We to should know them. Just get there and do it. So we did, and literally by the end of the set, I mean the audience reaction was. Phenomenal. It was yeah. Phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It, it took us by surprise, really. Yeah, totally. It really did. But by the end of the set, you know, Tony comes off and he's on his iPhone and, you know, stuff had already went up. Yeah. You know, people are posting it straight away to Facebook. You can see exactly how you did, right? Yeah. 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 Then, <laughs> yeah, it was it, remarkable. Then it was, you know, like the, the, our agent who's based in Holland, he was like, um, I've just had all these things from like China, Japan, and South America, and it's like, is this happening? Is it going to continue as a, as a band? Because as far as we're concerned, for the Keep It True Festival, it was going to be a one-off. Yeah. Right. And then we sort of spoke just before the festival, and because of the situation which was going on with the other band, we were like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. You know, you've got you've got the two co-founders of the fucking band. Yeah. You know, before that guy, before I even met that guy, but you know, guillotine founders, like you know. That's, a, that's, a, that. that's, yeah. a, that's <laughs> another that's another point of contention is because yes there was a name guillotine which was yeah. floated around which I had sort of buzzing around my head but the band was never actually no. called that no. yeah. there was never a logo designed for the for that name no. we certainly weren't as some people have went on their websites and said a Judas Priest tribute band no you know, we're, we're heavily in oh, I'm heavily in the priest the singer we had Clive Archer was heavily in the priest. Yeah. And the only song that, as fledgling musicians, young guys, the only song that we could actually pull off was Green Man Alishi. That's yeah. not even a fucking Which Priest song. Which was song. <laughs> you know, so we used to play that in, in the early days. And we used to do God of Thunder, because, you know, I'm a huge Kiss fan. Um, but, you know, that this, this is sort of getting off subject a little bit, but there's, there's, a, whole, there's a whole pre-history before... The other guy joined the band. Yeah, he was the last in- in- member, including, in. including the the iconic logo. Yeah, yeah. which which which, logo. which is uh, something that's become a bone of contention over who should use it and who should be allowed to use it. Right. 
um, and it's uh, it's become something that's been attached back to us. Yeah. We didn't choose to call the band Venom Inc. The band was called Iron Steel. The um, the promoters, the fans, <coughs> all the, the uh, everybody who was interested in the band said, "Come on, this is Venom. Yeah, this is Venom." So you know, and, and it's your logo. You know, and we were like, "Well, yeah," and I'm saying it's, it's going to help tell everybody who the band is when, when they come to Costa Rica or you know Santiago. And say, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't make sense any sense not to use it. Um, it's ours. Why? Why wouldn't we? So yeah, that's the, that's the reason behind it. Yeah. I mean, it does have been incorporated. I know yeah. it does because we've incorporated it into all the other projects. You yeah. know, Abaddon has his Abaddon project. You know, we do Empire. Jeff does Drill. I do. You know, my other stuff. It's like, you know, so we have lots of things, and it was like, well, okay, if we use it. You know, there's a Venom, so we're not going to say it's Venom, then we'll go Venom Incorporated, which means yeah. we, we're incorporating everything that we were, the history, the legacy, the material. You know, another one of those things to say, like, you know, um, someone is displeased that we go on stage and play Live Like an Angel or In Omni Satanis. It's like, well, if you wrote a song or you were part of writing a song or you wrote a song wholly, do you have the right to play it if you want to play it? I think that you absolutely should have the right to play it. You well, created yeah. it, or you partially created it. So and and, and it's know. as simple as this, Tim. I think if if we say to the fans, what would you like to hear? And they go, they say, uh, uh, play Seven Gates of Hell. Yeah. And we play Seven Gates of Hell. Why is that wrong? And who is that wrong to? The yeah. fan wanted to hear it, and we played it because we can. We They enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. Where is it wrong? Where is it wrong to do uh, that? And I think if the if the impetus is there and you guys want to if you guys want to do it, I mean the elephant in the room obviously is going to be are you going to record again? Well, yes. And what's that going to yes. look like and how's it going to be named? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but we're definitely going to record. I mean, there's there's songs in the writing stage, there's songs at demo stage. There's 101 riffs on hard drive. Yeah. Um, the new Empire album is finished. Um, the only thing we've got to do is put the vocals on, which hopefully we'll get in January yeah. if we've got some time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, there will be another, there'll be an, an album from us as, as Venom Inc or Iron and Steel, whatever you want to call us. Um, but on the subject of that, it's it's not going to be a sort of we're not going to look back at you know the the first two albums and. You know, Welcome to Hell and Black Metal. I've got to say, 75, 80 percent, maybe even 90 percent of those two albums. Yeah. The riffs are mine. Yeah. I did an interview a while ago, and the, the guy was saying, you know, like, oh, you know, like Die Hard and so on. He rhymed off all these tracks. I was going, my riff, my riff, my riff, my riff. And this is what's getting written out of history by certain people. Yeah, I know. And it's 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 just not right. The only thing we have got to counter. These and I mean, some of them have been vitriolic lies and just abuse. And the only thing we've got to counter with is the truth. Yeah, I know. And, and that's I mean, it. So you're, We're just it's so later truth. in life for you guys. Is it even? I know, it just exactly. Like, yeah. The fans want to hear some music. Yeah. And yeah. You, yeah. you just think like it's music, fans' so. music, and it's as simple as that. Yeah. I mean, you know, the idea of like writing, uh, which wasn't something we considered, or even doing more shows. It was like. That looked like it was going to be a giggle for Keep It True. You know, he stood up, uh, Abaddon then stands up on the kit, mm -hmm. and they went nuts. It's like, fucking well, hell, Abaddon's there. And then we, yeah. we passed through a few tracks, uh, you know, closing Encounters Battery. You know, 2,000 people saying Encounters Battery. We couldn't even hear ourselves doing it. And they were moving and jumping. And it was like, wow, something incredible happened beyond what we'd even thought. And that's what made us think, okay. And, and then to be getting booked before we'd even left Germany, after we'd only just played, was yeah. like, they're booking shows. It was like, oh, right, we should just do it then. Yeah. But what, but what is quite a, a, a prevalent is that you know we are really excited. Yeah. You know we're not those twenty-somethings or, or late teen people anymore that had that uh, <coughs> uh, euphoria about just creating something and playing, which is what happens with a young band, and you yeah. just want to hit the ground running and you just want to do it. To to be the age we are. And to be that excited about doing it, you know, and between us, I mean, uh, I, I wrote within within moments, I'd composed a song uh, for Metal Hammer magazine, yeah. who demoed that, and then Jeff wrote a song, and then, you know, the, the, the thing is with all of us is we're constantly being creative. You know, Tony 
prepping material for his album and stuff for, for so long. You yeah. know, I've been writing in there. Jeff's got the terabytes of drives. It's like there's never a moment where one of us or all of us are not thinking of something creative. Yeah. And we thought, wow, let's just pile it all in there, and, and whatever happens, happens. You can't, you can't go. Right, well, let's try and do this and this and this. We don't do that. We just let it happen. Yeah. And, and that's what the beauty of this thing, it wasn't contrived, it wasn't planned, we didn't, we didn't have some ulterior motive, it isn't about money, it wasn't about anything, it was just about let's go and play some songs and boom, it went from there. Yeah. And we're going with it, we're riding the horse as they say, yeah. or you know, um, what else ever, whatever else they would say, what else would they say? Giraffe. Would you like, what? Or a giraffe. Or or if, they, giraffe. if you would write a giraffe, or um, something, what else would this? I know, I know, I felt the same, I felt like that. Whoa! But you haven't that many eyes in the neck, I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it from like every angle. Well, if you're not going to work with Hugh you shall not be named, you both, you really want to work, so yeah. what should it matter? There's people out there that want to hear the material. I think there's people out there that want to hear material created by you guys. Mm -hmm. And whatever the name is, you know, if it's a, deri a deliberation of a venom or it's, it's something else. It's something connected, something yeah, exactly. About, you know, yeah, you know yeah. the thing is now that if, if we, you know, once once we've uh, completed the end of this year with the, with the North American, South American, the European tours, we'd be looking at this band, let alone what me and Jeff have been doing with Empire exactly. up to now, which we've done so many shows, you're probably looking at si in excess of 60 odd shows we'll have done tours. Um, you know, now we don't really even need to be called anything. You know, yeah. we didn't give ourselves the title. People wanted mm -hmm. us to have the title, yeah. and now people are just coming. So, you know, there will be those hardcore fans of a certain age who go, "Without this guy, it isn't that." And obviously, he wants to promote that. Without me, it isn't that. It's like, well, that is what it is. You know, yeah. you, you like cream in your coffee. He doesn't even yeah. like coffee, and and I don't like cream in my coffee. You know, that music is like anything else. You know, some. Oh, I watched Corn last night. It was fucking brilliant. Yeah. One yeah. guy's going, ah, oh, brilliant, isn't it? Another guy goes, these do nothing for me. It's like, you know, not everybody's going to like the same thing. Yeah. If you want to come and see what we do, come and you'll have fun. If you just keep an open mind and just come for the music, and it's about music, not the politics, not the religion, not what he says about she says just about the experience. If you don't want to come, don't fucking come. Stay yeah. wherever you are and do what you want to do. Do you it's think it's because you guys are all still alive? I mean, we're going to get a Ramon set on Sunday. Mark is going to yeah. Yes. Andrew WK is going to sing. Yeah. We're going to get some Ramon's music. I mean... Do you want to hear the Ramon's? Do, Ramon's do you want to hear it? You know, yeah. With yeah. a guy who was there doing it? Of yeah. course you do. You know, uh, it, it, it's one of those things, you know, <clears> to, go and, to go and meet a Ramon, it's like, fuck, you know, this yeah. is fantastic, you know? And so it's it's about the music at the end of the day and the great songs. We could have went out and just done primeval stuff and Temples of Ice and, and Wastelands and our period stuff. But it's like, but the fans are going, no, please play this, please play that, please play it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, do we not play Red Light Fever because, you know, I wasn't there on the record and, uh, you know. Now, could we play it? Yeah, should we play it? Why not? Why not? Do the fans want to yeah. hear it? Yeah. Did yeah, they enjoy it? Yeah. That's it. Well, There's no more than that. It's, it's the same, same case with it's the same, same case with, you know, Tommy Fair didn't write fucking cold gin. Yeah. You know, Eric Singer wasn't there in the early days. Yeah. But you're still getting the kiss. Does that make a difference? Does that make a difference? Yeah. And you go, but there, but that was the front man, so it's a bit. It's like, well, well, okay, you know, okay. But you, I guess there's a kind of argument there. But what's your experience of the song? You know, I mean, I've been on stage with people playing Ace of Spades. It wasn't Emmy. Yeah. Did I enjoy it? Yeah. Did the audience enjoy it? Yeah. Did is the song is it the song a really cool song? Do you want to hear the definitive version? Yeah, because Motorhead these days don't play the definitive version. Yeah. You know, of course it's not 1980. You're not the same person now, and so it will never be that moment that you first heard it. But it, it, it's that is it? You can't replace the first time anybody bought Welcome to Hell or heard Warhead or you'll never do that to a guy who who was there in 1985. You know, a guy came yesterday to get a, a box set signed, but didn't want me to sign it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, that's cool. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I said, why are you sorry? Because he was there in 1985 and saw these guys. That's his moment. Yeah. You know, you can't replace that moment. And why should you replace the moment? But if we can take that guy, put him in the audience and go, what did you hear in 1985? We could play the same songs to him again and he can go, fuck. And he relives that moment and it does something for him. 
That's what it's about. I saw people getting their photos with you yesterday. They were mm -hmm. stoked. Yeah, yeah, they were just so happy, you know. <laughs> We, we have a thing, there's, a, there's an online thing called The Deepest Hell, which is like unofficial Venom uh, uh, site, and these are all collectors. I mean, these guys have like things you've never seen, and they, they spend all of their money on collecting. They're so, so supportive, and everywhere we go, if any of the members are near, we try and meet them, I try and do something. Now, we, we're coming to Montreal, it was last minute, but we had a guest list spot, and we didn't have any guests because it was last minute. And then a couple of the members who are French Canadian said, you know, is there any way we can come meet you? And I went, tell you what. So I gave them VIP passes yeah. and they were like, oh my God. Yeah. And you know, that's something we could give back. And, and that means something really, really special. Somebody who's been know. collecting for like 20 or possibly 30 years, that's just the, the, <coughs> the cherry on the top of that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And we get that because we're all fans of other bands before we're the same, yeah. so we, we totally get it we have you know it's not it's not like some star thing it's exactly how i'd be with with blackmore or somebody from yeah from purple you know and, the, like and their response to like this is so incredible i can't believe it it's like you know it, it's pretty easy for me to just put your name on a list yeah. when there's a space and go no problem and then when you go is there anywhere i can get a photograph yeah, just stand there and take a picture. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, you know, you know, because these days, you know, everybody's trying to gain stuff from a $600 for a photo session and blah, blah, blah. Okay, if you've got like 10,000 people at a show and every single person at the show wants to take a photograph with you, you're it's limited impossible. in time, yeah. it's impossible. Mm -hmm. But one guy wanting to shoot, go, can I take a picture? It's like, absolutely. Yeah. Boss, you got your picture. Could you sign that? Absolutely. I've got 10 of them. No worries. You know, we'll keep signing as long as until someone takes them off us and we can't go. And yeah. that's the beauty. And we played a show once, me and Jeff, where at the very end, we had to go, we were playing with Overkill in Germany, and at the very end of the signing, a guy came with like a stack of records and put them down, and they went, uh, oh no, you can't sign them because you've got to go, and he just started signing them, and she went, no, you've got to go, and I said, look, that guy has collected them all his life, this might be his only, only chance. moment yeah, to get him that's signed, it. and you want us to go, sorry, we can't sign them. Yeah. It's like, now we'll stay here till everyone's signed and then we'll go and play. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. the value of it. That's what it's about. It's about, you know, those people and the music and us. And there is nothing else. There is nothing else. Cool. I think our ride's going to come. So we should bring this up. But okay. I can keep doing this for another half an hour. <laughs> yeah, I wish, yeah.